All right, well, uh, let's call this meeting to order. And uh, I forget, do we do any formalities when we're calling? We, the we do to call order? the roll. We, we do uh, that. Let's do that. Judy, would you call the roll? Oh, I'd be happy to. Jacob. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jacobs? Uh, present. Thank you. Salmonson? Present. Osterholm? Present. Thank you. Um, also present are village solicitor Brianne Parcels and planning and zoning administrator Denise Swinger. Um, and Raven Barron's administrative assistant is going to host the meeting. Thank you. All right. Well, the first item um, of business is to uh, review the minutes from the prior meeting. Um, and uh, well, let's review the agenda. Is there, are there any additions, subtractions? We have the, the two uh, variance applications scheduled for tonight. Anything else? and the ubiquitous uh, agenda planning. It's a fan favorite. <laughs> um, if there's nothing else, then we'll, we'll proceed with that agenda. What about uh, the review of the minutes for January 27th? Uh, those that were present should take a look at that. And if do we have any additions or subtractions, changes? I move we, we accept the, the minutes as written. And uh, Anthony, if you're willing to say adopt the minutes, then we can well, can then vote. make a motion to adopt the minutes as printed. Thank you. All right. And do we need a second for a motion to adopt? We, we do. have a second. Wake Scott up. I'm awake. Scott, you want to second that motion? I'll second it. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes adopted, thank you. And so we're on to our first uh, variance application. And this would be the one for 332 Phillips Street. And usually we ask um, Denise to kick it off with a report and then we wanna hear from the applicants, of course, uh, questions, answers, public hearing. Sure. Go ahead, Denise, um, thank you. Uh huh. At Raven, if you wanted to, um, if you have the ability to put the picture of the house at the front, the front yard picture, um, this, uh, what they're asking for is a variance to the front yard setback. Um, typically in, resi in, in residential B, the front yard setback is 20 feet. These, these homes have been there for a long time. And so their setbacks are grandfathered in. Um, they want to uh, update their porch that is there. Um, they're wanting to just extend it uh, lengthwise to uh, making it about, it, I think, 12 feet or six. Um, it was, I thought I had that in my notes. Um, anyway, they, they want to extend the length of it. 13 feet, okay. And then um, they also want to come out a little bit from the porch. It'd be about eight inches uh, out because of the um, roof overhang. They're going to put a roof on it. Um, but then they also wanted to do um, uh, a steps going down. And those steps would come within one inch of the property line as they understand it to be. I went out and tried to do a measurement. Um, I wasn't really sure there was. I know Tommaso, who's on here tonight, um, had said that there, um, he's the uh, person who completed the application on behalf of uh, the owners, um, that it had been um, marked and there was a stake, but I, uh, what I saw was one, I think it looked like, like a bamboo stick. I wasn't really sure if that was, was the correct marking, but it does, go ahead. Oh, I think it had a ribbon tied to it. But a ribbon, this one. It is, it is about, uh, I think it ended up being about three feet off the sidewalk. Well, okay, because I, what I measure, what I'm measuring is um, the steps would be about one inch from the property line, about two, like about two and a half feet from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so my recommendation uh, is for the, the eight inch variance for the porch roof, roof overhang. I don't recommend the addition of the steps at the front because unless I'm misunderstanding this, they're already at the side and they could still be at the side. Um, 
they were the, getting torn off for the new porch because the porch is wider. So um, we would have to build new steps on the side. Okay. So you could still do that though, right? Yeah. Okay. So that was the, con the concern we had because otherwise we're, we'd have to get an official survey. And what's concerning is having it um, so close to, it will come within two feet, one inch from the, from our sidewalk. Um, and I don't know if there's any future plans to expand that sidewalk down the road. Um, I don't know. I did do some measurements nearby of the house to the uh, north and to the south and the house to the north was like about six and a half feet away from the sidewalk. The house to the south was, was about one and a half feet away. Mm -hmm. um, it was much closer. Um, and I don't know how long ago those steps had been there. Probably their grandfather did. So that, that was my recommendation, but um, I'll leave it up to Board of Zoning Appeals to talk it out with the applicants. Denise, can, can I get you to explain something before the, mm -hmm. they uh, continue? You just explained that you were not recommending addition to the steps to the front. And in your write-up, you had said um, that the steps, because the steps could be located at the side of the porch, which would further expand the nonconformity. Can you explain that? Well, <clears throat> if you did it at the side of the porch, you're only you're pretty much, they're asked, they would have an eight inch expansion. Uh, they're, they're further expanding the nonconformity by eight inches uh, for the roof overhang itself, but that wouldn't affect the, it at all on the side. The fact that they're, that they're expanding the porch to 13 feet, they're still staying within pretty much the same plane. But if they now bump out the, the steps, they're really then uh, making a further um, nonconformity by not following the current code, is what I meant by that. Okay, let's see if they, do any of the other uh, members of the BZA have questions for Denise, and then I want to give Tommaso or whomever else wants to make a presentation on behalf of the property owner a chance. But any other questions for Denise before we go to Tommaso? I have one. the The roof just covers the porch, not the steps. Just the right. porch. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Denise? I don't have. Okay. Any. Was that a no, Scott? I think that was a no. Uh, so, Tommaso, you're you're speaking on behalf of the property owners. Yeah, they're here also. I think. Yeah. Okay. So, well, go ahead. Now, what this, what else do we what else do we need to know about this and it would be good if you could address, uh, Denise is uh, essentially proposing some compromise position of you know, yeah. steps on the side. So if you would address that as well. Um, well, they would prefer them coming out the front, um, you know, obviously, so that's what we are applying for. Um, the, the, the new porch is about two inches, I think, or four inches um, deeper than the old one. And, um, and then the overhang adds another six inches. So that's where the eight inches comes from. Um, I was thinking, you know, in general, like if we wanted to, we could put a fence right on the property line that's four feet high. So I don't necessarily know why, you know, steps are different than a four foot fence. Um, I can see where the, the, the new structure, since it's taller than four feet, would, would fall into that, you know, nonconformity. But if I defined, decided to put three fences in a row, I don't know that. I would be again, you know, anyone would be against that, would they? My only thing is that we're, we're, we're guesstimating that that's where the property line is. Um, so if um, I feel that if Board of Zoning Appeals wants to grant them having the steps coming off the front, then there's going to need to be a survey so we know exactly where that property line is. Well, we actually have a survey stake that we lined up with. Well, they would want a, a registered survey, which is a whole other thing. And this and is one that our neighbor did right directly okay. to, our, to our south. Okay. No, the one over here. But go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, there, Denise, there's no dispute that it would be two and a half or three feet from the sidewalk. Am I right? The end of the stairs? 
Correct. And so, I mean, to, if if the if the if what we are going with is correct, right? Okay. But so the the reason why you you're saying we would need a another survey, explain that to me. Why would we need another survey? A better I survey. I can handle that one actually, um, Ellis. Thanks. The um, the building of the steps in terms of a survey would be yeah. to avoid any encroachment on the actual right of way over the applicant's property line because if they are encroaching on the public right of way, then they might have an issue with marketable title and then we would also be uh, having problems with expanding the sidewalk or going through and doing anything um, as far as like utilities that are within our right of way. Okay, so that's the sensitivity. That's the sensitivity in terms of where exactly is the property line versus where the end of the sidewalk is. And could we because also the sidewalk doesn't take up the entirety of the right of way. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Tommaso. Yeah. No, I, was, I was asking if you had a question, Terry. Yeah, my question was, we have a neighbor directly to the south who's uh, step is only 10 inches from the sidewalk or 18 inches right now, which is 10 inches over the, the, the property line. And our proposed uh, addition um, stays a good 26 inches away from the sidewalk, just barely, or, or like you said, one inch, I think, over the property line. So it doesn't inhibit that much if you did want to expand the sidewalk which would really include cutting down a lot of bushes of our neighbors next door too. I mean, it, sidewalk's in good shape and it's nice and wide right now. Anyway, um, so I'm not sure if that's would be an issue anybody would see if they came walking down. You know, it's in, it's in good shape. So, and as Tommaso said, you could put a fence right on the property line. That's correct, isn't it? And uh, this is the houses from 1854. And we know all this different things are, are different from the new, new structures, so. Sure. But so, but to understand what Breen had, had to say is that we're concerned about this one inch to the, to the property line. So if in fact that's wrong and your stairs are over the property line, then there could be a problem somewhere down the road. Did I state that correctly? That is absolutely <laughs> correct. Um, so that's, that's the problem. And so I, maybe we should, I mean, we're getting advice from council that, that this sort of fancy survey, I'm calling it, I'm using the technical term, fancy survey would need to be done. Uh, is that something that, you know, the homeowners would be up for doing? I, don't, I mean, is that something that costs, you know, hundred bucks or 10,000? Oh, it's about $1,200 usually. $1,200? Yeah. Wow. For the registered wow. survey, yeah. So we could, could you stipulate that if we got the registered survey, we could put the steps in front, otherwise we have to put it on the side or something like that, or is it well, the BZ we, we can BZ go down that in charge road. of whether or not to grant the variance and w to what extent they would grant the variance. So I can't answer that, but that would be a determination for the BZA to make. Yeah, we have in the past granted variances conditioned upon certain things happening. And so we could certainly do that, assuming the BZA is inclined to want to do that. Um, so uh, questions for the, uh, the, the owners and or Tommaso? I had, I had just a, a couple oh, of sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Which, which are not, of course, the, the legal ramifications speaking from the village, but um, I didn't, I, there wasn't um, a letter that was in the packet from our neighbors to the north. I mean, for what relevance this has that our neighbors to the north are fine with the proposed porch. If, in knowing that you contacted the neighbors and the neighbors from the south, I don't think you received a letter from, but have communicated to us that they're fine with it. They're the yeah. ones who have a step. Their current step is um, already over the property line. Yeah, their current step is eight inches closer to the sidewalk than the bottom of our steps would be. And just one other point. It's a very, as you could see from the photo, it's a very symmetrical house, as is that design from that time period. And the steps, the central steps, I think are much more keeping with the symmetrical nature of the house 
than the side steps are, you know, architecturally. I think that's a, a point. I know that's not legal ramifications, but I do think that's a point in uh, the architectural um, consistency. And, yeah, it does maintain yeah. historic significance of the yeah. house. Yeah. To have yeah. the central steps and. Gotcha. So questions from other members of the BZA? Yes, I have one just so I have it. As, as what the uh, tenants are proposing, assuming the property line is correct, there'll be eight inches from the property line. The or bottom no. of the last step one will be one, one inch from the property line. One inch. One inch. Okay. And, and you just judging from the, looking down the street, your neighbors, I think you said the south, theirs is already over the property line. Yes. The best knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't on record say that those the neighbors are uh, yeah. over the property line because I didn't uh, didn't look at their property. Understand. Other than right. just <laughs> GIS kind yeah. of. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, I know that would need to be a measurement from y'all. When I measured it today, it was 18 inches from the sidewalk to the neighbors to the south to their step, and we right. would be at least 26 inches, maybe. Okay. 20, yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Scott, any other, any questions? Nope, don't have any questions. All right, um, this, well, do we want to, um, I'm, I'm gonna suggest we consider a proposal that says that if they can satisfy uh, our solicitor that their, that the steps end on, on their property, that we would grant this variance as requested. So it'd be conditioned upon that. And I would leave the, that sort of proof necessary uh, up to the, you know, between, or maybe it's between Denise and, uh, and the, uh, and the EBs. Does that seem like a, is that a proposal folks would be, I'll ask the other uh, BZA members, are you open to considering that? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All right. And so um, now let's open Wait, this well, up for a, well, so we then we're going to need a, a, a formal motion and second if that is in fact what you want to proceed with your Duncan factors based on. We, we're going to need we need a, a public hearing first. I think we need to open a public hearing. You are so correct. So, uh, <laughs> so I, before I, I, we, I just wanted to kind of know what the lay of the land was. <laughs> so let's open the public hearing. Do, are there any members of the public that want to be heard on this matter? They should come forth or forever hold their peace. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't hear. Anybody. I think we received that one letter, which I don't think uh, pertains to the situation. I don't think, unless, unless, I, unless we don't uh, the EBs are going to be doing oh. a lot of smoking on their front porch. I don't think it's about that. Yeah, that letter came in after the packet, but that they did, but everyone did get the letter from the neighbor to the north. I don't think it's pertinent to our discussion. No, no, the other letter that's actually within our, there is one letter that the, their neighbor supports has no problem with them doing it. Yeah, that one. Then we got oh, one. That made it in there. Yeah, that's in here. Yeah, but the smoking letter wasn't included. But I don't. I, oh, that's I a separate. Discussion. That's a separate one. Yeah. Yeah, I assume that's for the next one. Yeah. Okay. Oh. For the the brew. I apologize. Oh. No problem. So, um, Brianne, do you want to clarify this? What what would what we would expect for a survey if that is a part of the motion? Well, uh, um, if they am I a mute? Okay. So, if they want to build up to the property line, um, then they can have a survey. They could have a survey done showing, it based on the BZA's motion, that it is one inch from the property line as long as it is not encroaching on the village's right of way. And again, the understanding is that the sidewalk doesn't take up the entirety of the right of way. So measuring to the sidewalk is not measuring to the property yeah. line. A survey would determine where the property line actually is so they don't go over it. And a survey being an official survey being what? Uh, by, by a registered professional surveyor. And is that the only way to do it? Is there some other way that that can be established by reference to, uh, the, you know, surveys yeah, the that property, are done next the door? Property GIS records are not a reliable source for measurements in this context because, as the property owners already indicated, the house is so old 
And in terms of the plat, the plat measurements when they were done back in the 1800s are also not entirely exact the way a professional survey would be. Okay. So they can tell so, whether it's going to be one inch from the property line or whether it would be several inches from the property line or whether their plan would be to do it over. And as far as if they would enlist the help of a surveyor who tells them it's probably going to be cheaper for you to continue to build the steps on the side, that would be the property owner's call if the BZA says we're going to grant you the variance to build up to the property line. So really, we're, what we were saying is that we, we will grant, uh, the motion would be to grant a variance to build it, build this as, um, as described with the steps on the side with no conditions, with the steps on the front, having to sat first satisfy the condition and state the condition again, if you don't mind. The condition would be that they not encroach over the property line. Okay, and, and provide uh, the uh, survey necessary to establish that, right? Yes. Okay. Would they so have that's to the motion. That? Would they have to do that or can they just take a chance and pay the price? If they're over the property line and they have to. BZA, BZA has actually dealt with that situation before, right after I came on board. And we'll, we, we could discuss that um, as far as what it results with litigation expenses, because uh, rolling the dice and taking a chance when you're uh, encroaching on a public right of way is um, never a good idea. But the penalty would be if. If, if the city wanted to enlarge a sidewalk or they were over the line and you, the city had, I'm sorry, the village had to do something, the fix would be they would dig the steps out. Correct. Or shorten. It sounds like a lot cheaper than paying somebody $1,200, though I think that's high for a survey. Yeah, I can't predict what a survey would be. Um, and they may be able to um, get a survey at a different price. I mean, the, the question would be, how soon do they need it in order to get the construction of the steps done? And I know based on my own experience right now, getting a surveyor scheduled is a bit difficult because they're always busy in the springtime. I also might uh, respond to that question, uh, Tony, by saying that it's too late to roll the dice. They've brought the matter to the BZ. And I don't think that the BZA in good conscience can say, hey, just see if you can get away with it. You're being asked to address the question. So isn't it wonderful that we brought this forward? <laughs> <laughs> we do appreciate it. <laughs> we point. Uh, all right. Uh, any other, any other, we, uh, we're closing the public hearing, having heard from no other members of the public. Any other discussion among the board? There is a, well, there's a motion. Is there a second to the motion? I will second it. Okay. Uh, any further discussion of the motion? I would just note that uh, you do need to weigh all the Duncan factors, and we some of them won't be applicable, but um, that's the BZA's obligation under the law is to look at the Duncan factors for each variant. Thank you, Brian. We, we will do that. Uh, any further just generalized discussion before yeah, we uh, just weigh just, the uh, Duncan factors? The motion one more time. Uh, the why don't I, is, uh, why don't, do you want me to do that, Ellis? Yes, Judy, I do. <laughs> I thought you might. I thought you might want that. Okay. So I believe that the motion is to grant the variance as requested, either with the steps on the side with no conditions or the steps to the front with the condition that um, a survey is conducted by a registered official surveyor, which denotes the property line. And as long as there is no encroachment over the property line, if there is no encroachment over the property line. There you go. So it's a uh, motion's been moved and seconded. We've uh, opened it for discussion. And I think we're now ready to do the Duncan factors. And so just to remind everybody, we go through each one of these things. And Judy leads us through each one because she has experience at it and she's very good at it. And <laughs> you, you, you vote whether yay or nay on each one. And then, and then at the very end, there's, we, we will vote whether to grant the, uh, or to uh, grant the motion as stated. Uh, so Judy, do you wanna take it from here? I will take it from here. So your first you. question is whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without 
the variance. And Ellis, just give me a wave when you want me to go ahead and call the roll, because I'm- Oh, dear. call the roll. Okay. Um, Osterholm. Oh, uh, no. Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. All right, the second question is whether the variance is substantial. Let's call the roll. Just go ahead and call the roll after you read each one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Osterholm. No. Jacobs. No. Thomason. No. Question three, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered or whether adjoining properties would suffer a, a substantial detriment as a result of the variance. Salmonson. No. Osterholm. No. Jacobs. No. Okay. Four is whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of government services such as water distribution, sanitary sewer collection, electric distribution, stormwater collection, or refuse. refuse. Collection. Jacobs. No. Nope. Osterholm. No. Nope. Salmonson. No. All right. Whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. Osterholm. No. Nope. Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay. Six, whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be obviated through some method other than a variance. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay. Um, whether the existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created. Jacobs. You know, I'm, I'm not sure that's even applies, but I'll say no. Okay. Osterholm. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Okay. And eight, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substan substantial justice done by granting the variance. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay, so then do you go away, please? Do you take a vote on the motion? Yeah, I believe so. Brian, Brian, is that your, are we ready to take a vote on the motion, Brian? You're ready to vote on the motion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion as stated? Uh, Aye. No. Aye. No. No, we got to second it. No, it's been, it's been made and seconded. We've moved okay, so a second. Ellis, do you want to call roll? Okay, yes. Um, Osterholm. Yes, aye. Okay. Salmonson. No. Jacobs. Yes. Thank you. So the motion okay. passes. There we go. Well, thank you guys for coming in. We appreciate it. I uh, hope this doesn't end up uh, delaying the project too much or causing too much additional expense. And for what it's worth, uh, stairs in the, I understand why you think stairs in the front would look better. Thank you for that understanding. Thank and thank you all <laughs> for your time. <laughs> oh, sure, certainly. All right, we hope it works out too. All righty, take care of you guys. Should I explain uh, my no vote? Certainly, yes. I voted no because I, I, um, I think we put too too much restriction on the official survey bit. I think I think we're putting too much uh, airing too much expense to put a step in, and uh, which may not have any bearing in the next 150 years. But it's good to hear you say. I mean, that I, I'm that does the steps in the middle. I just didn't want the tenants to go away. Think I'm an idiot, but not the steps have to go in the middle. <laughs> okay. I feel better now. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. As long as you feel good about yourself, that's all that matters. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. I think we're ready for the second item here. Which this one does involve the brewery uh, or the party room of the brewery. brewery. Oh, let me go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, please do, cool. Denise. Okay, so um, Lisa Walters and Nate Cornett um, have went to Planning Commission to have an outdoor patio uh, at the front of their property. Originally, some years back, it was approved for the side uh, and was going to be also a rooftop. And they changed their design and they want it at the front. Um, the staff requested an official survey, um, which uh, was a good thing because there was a, a, it wasn't a bit of an encroachment um, onto the, uh, over the property line. But they went ahead and they modified that and it was approved by Planning Commission, this new design with, um, with them going for variance from the DZA. Um, now, the, they are inside their property line and that's been established. Um, and let me see. Typically, one of the things about this part of town is that, you know, there's supposed to be a 30 foot setback, but like, you know, this building is an existing building, it's the old um, uh, bowling alley. And, um, you know, you can consider, you know, staff bills, you can consider by proxy, the fact that there's this huge um, uh, green belt, uh, swale, public sidewalk, uh, before you even get to their, their property line. So this, um, I think it, it, it will be within um, th one foot to three and a half feet. It's kind of, a, the property line is on a slant as you can see on that uh, drawing, but they, right. will, they will be inside their property line um, and they're just asking for a variant so that they can do this. Um, and this, I, I don't know if it's a requirement of liquor control that they have an outdoor area or not, but um, staff doesn't have any issue with it. Public works director doesn't have any issue with it being um, where it is in relationship to the sidewalk. There was, there, there was one uh, letter. Did everyone get that letter? Yes. yes. This is the, the, the one about the outdoor smoke, right? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Denise, just remind us, they're seeking a variance from what particular rule? I'm sorry? They're seeking a variance from what rule? From what rule? 30 yes. foot setback. From the what 30 setback? foot setback. Oh, gotcha. okay. So yeah, it was originally, I mean, nowadays it's a 30 foot setback. Um, so they're, they're, they're building, I mean, is already uh, like non-conforming. Yeah, it's already non-conforming. So their grandfather, I think it's like 20 feet of setback. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. Questions for Denise before we hear from, uh, is, is somebody here on behalf? Well, I, I thought I thought I saw the, the owners in the, uh, the here today. Ted Denelle is here too. Yeah, and Ted's here. Yeah. Ted, is, Ted will Ted's be, uh, he's representing. Okay. Um, any questions for Denise before we uh, uh, hear from Ted? Uh, am I hearing no nothing, Tony? No, I'm Scott, good. Anything for I'm ready for the. I'm ready for the tenant to speak. Okay. All right. Who's going to speak on behalf of the applicant? Um, I think I will. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit about what drove the decision to put the. Um, the patio on the front of the building uh, as opposed to the side uh, because this is a more of a destination uh, venue with uh, the parking lot and people driving to it there will be a lot of local foot traffic on the south side but predominantly this is a, a drive to place um, having the patio as a walk through from the front door to the parking lot becomes a security issue for the brewery to control patrons who are drinking uh, and leaving the site without any kind of monitoring. Um, by enclosing the patio to the front of the building, uh, staff and um, the owners have the opportunity then to make people walk through the establishment back out the front door so that they can see if they are either too inebriated or whatever, but they're just better controlled. Um, you don't see glasses leaving the, the facility um, and a whole lot of other things like that. 
So that was the, the driving force in wanting to put it in the front. Um, the second part of that was that due to the way that that strip um, works with automobiles and the speed of the traffic, um, it doesn't look like any of the businesses are pedestrian friendly or even user friendly. They're very car oriented, they're cold, it's, it's somewhat subdued. So putting the people that are patronizing the space in the front yard really opens up the opportunity for people to see that, oh, this is a, a place to stop. Um, it, it's just more of an, an exciting entry into uh, the whole strip. And from my perspective and what I read in the comprehensive plan, anything that the village can do to promote walkability and promote pedestrian and outdoor use is highly encouraged. Um, so all those factors come into play and that's why we're doing the proposal as it is. All righty, excellent. Um, and uh, do Lisa or Nate have anything that they wanted to add? Um, this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the placement of the patio, but I just wanted to reaffirm that we are uh, working hard to make this a little bit more of a walking um, cycling destination and that we, through our social media, we are going to uh, create a map that includes uh, folks riding from downtown or from the brewery itself, the current brewery, um, down the bike path up Allen Street and then along the, the, the paved path to the location. So we really are trying to encourage kind of that community aspect down there. And I think people seeing people like right out front will also kind of play into that, honestly. Okay, great. Nate, anything you wanted to add? Well, I, you know, initially it was gonna be a rooftop patio. And, um, you know, so this is like the next best thing. I, but I think it does soften the building and it does look, uh, it'll make the building look a lot better than, than on the side. Um, that and we don't, you know, we're trying to keep as much parking as we can as well. So that would suck to eat up a bunch of uh, blacktop. Gotcha. Okay, questions from um, any of the BZA members for uh, um, uh, Lisa, Nate, or Ted? I'm looking for it, but I can't find it in the write up. Um, is the patio, I take the patio is going to be enclosed with a fence? Yeah. Correct. Okay. That's a, how high a fence? Um, it will be a. Um, um, metal fence that we have, if you have already been beside or by the building, we also have included, um, there we go, okay. it looks pretty much like that. <laughs> Good, thank you. Yeah. That's the only question I have. Okay. Scott, any questions? No, that drawing answers everything, really. Okay, terrific, very good. Um, all right, then. Um, Let's open the public hearing part of this. And I, I think we'll treat the letter about the smoking as, a, as public hearing input, if you will. And let me just ask, Brian, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to read this letter. Does it raise anything that we were able to take into consideration or should take into consideration? It'd be under number four of the Duncan factors. Um, I believe in terms of whether you're talking about uh, the essential character of the neighborhood being substantially altered or adjoining properties, including the sidewalk suffering interference as a result of the variance. I got a okay. question for you, Brianna. Can you walk down the sidewalk smoking a cigarette? Yes, there's down? there's nothing in the Yellow Springs code that prohibits that. Okay, because I also found something factually wrong with the initial letter I got is because they said no other business. And that's, that's false because if you go downtown to the tavern, they're smoking areas right on the public sidewalk with high traffic area of the King's Yard too. And uh, I don't, there's not really a lot of people, I don't see the complaining or anything like that. Now, I'm not saying I'm just disregarding this letter. I understand that where they're coming from. But there, there are some communities that prohibit smoking in all public areas, including right. sidewalks, but Yellow Springs does not have an ordinance to that effect. We do not, okay. I want clarification of that. That's what I needed right there, thank you. Great. And thanks for that, Scott. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, 
Well, then um, can we, we should somehow, because, uh, because Frank Jennings took the time and energy to, uh, well, I should ask, is, is there any other member of the public here that wants to speak? I don't know if Ted and Lisa and Nate are aware of the letter. We are oh. not. Okay. No. Well, I could briefly summarize it. It basically says that uh, this particular person has a lot of uh, uh, concern about uh, smoke wafting off of the patio and people walking by being exposed to secondhand smoke. And, you know, how will that be addressed? That's what the person. Oh, I can about. answer that. Easy. <laughs> the public sidewalk. The public sidewalk is approximately four feet lower than the floor of the patio and approximately six to 10 feet. I don't know what that dimension is from the public sidewalk. Um, in addition, the prevailing winds are always southwest and northwest toward the building. So, and, and just due to traffic, the um, air from the cars as they go by uh, that will, way, right? will draw um, smoke away from the front of that building. I mean, it, it, it can't be a problem. Um, one other side thing, if I understand this correctly, is that uh, this might help, is that we will not allow smoking on that patio. That's what oh. I was wondering. Well, okay. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Will you allow drinking on that patio? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't want smoke right. to interfere with the beer experience. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's have the letter included in the in the, the record somehow. Judy, do you have a way of doing that? It, it is. It's, it's, it's in the online packet and okay. you have received it. So, yeah, it's been placed in the online packet. Okay, perfect. All right. Do we have a motion? I make a motion we adopt the variance as requested. Well, now in this case, you actually have to approve. <laughs> I just thought I, I, I make a she's messing with you. the variance as requested. Okay, is there a second? I will second that. All right, terrific. Okay, so now again, we're gonna walk through the factors and Judy, because she's really warmed up on this now, is going to race us through these factors. I'm, I'm very warm. Here we go. Question number one, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Osterholm. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. All right. Number two, whether the variance is substantial. Salmonson. No. Osterholm? No. Jacobs? Nope. Three, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would substantial, be substantially altered or whether the adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment as a result of the variance, Jacobs? Uh, no. Osterholm? No. Salmonson? No. Number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services, such as water distribution, sanitary sewer collection, electric distribution, stormwater collection, or refuse collection, Salmonson. I have to say no, I, nothing was brought up about it. Okay. It, Osterholm. No. Jacobs. No. Number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restriction. Osterholm. No. Jacobs. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Number six, whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be obviated through some method other than a variance. Salmonson. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Jacobs. Yes. Okay. Seven, whether the existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created. <clears throat> Osterholm? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. And the last one, whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Uh, Jacobs? Yes. Osterholm? Yes. Salmonson? Yes. All right, so now we go to 
the motion. All right. Uh, sorry, which is to move, to, we simply moved to approve the variance as requested and was seconded. Jacobs. Yes. Osterholm. Yes. Salmonson. Yes. Motion passes. All right. Well, again, thanks uh, everybody who came tonight. And um, Ted, are you uh, on the East Coast somewhere? I am in New York State. Oh, nice. Uh, Greenwood Lake. Good. Good to see you. Good nice to see seeing you. Guys. you. Nice Thank seeing you, you Nate and Lisa as well. Uh, good luck with this enterprise. Thank you. Thanks. See you all on the patio. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Uh, so uh, that uh, those are the two uh, applications that we had on the agenda, and that brings us to agenda planning. And I'm never quite sure what the heck that means. Judy, do you know? You know what that means. What is it? What are we talking about here? Well, Denise knows precisely what that means. <laughs> oh. um, I'm going to pass it right on. I, right now, we don't have anything before us, but you know how hey. to, weeks from now we might. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Well, then, is there anything else for the good of this cause? Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing nothing. Is there a motion to adjourn? Everyone, I will make what? a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Hey, thanks, everybody. Nice Thank to you. see you all. Good job. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks for setting this up. And for being such great professionals, uh, our professional staff. Oh, always. Marvelous job. <laughs> and thanks so much for cheering, Chair. <laughs>